The status of the US dollar as the world's reserve currency is under attack, and recent policies in China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, and Brazil are evidence of that. With China's exponential economic growth over America, are things finally going to take a turn? Will China's yuan defeat the dollar to become the world's reserve currency? In today's video, we're going to pit the dollar against China's yuan and see who comes out on top. Money talk is not enough. China in recent years has overtaken the United States economy in terms of sheer size. But it's important to note that having a large economy on its own isn't enough for a country to seize global reserve status. But maybe this, combined with some bad luck for the dollar, could help the yuan take the throne. A CNBC report earlier this year echoed the thought that the greenback is ready for a fall as the top currency soon. This means that countries will stop using the dollar to exchange goods. The United States suffers a trillion dollar debt and the dollar's share in global money supply is diminishing too. All of this questions the dollar's credibility in the face of the Chinese yuan's increasing influence. But here's where things get interesting. The dollar still holds 62% of the world's aggregated reserve currency. This means that most central banks in other countries are swimming in dollars for the capital markets. The yuan isn't to be seen in even the next four reserve currencies, which are the euro, yen, pound sterling, and Swiss franc. The main fear of losing the dollar comes from the recent recession, depleting purchasing power of more Americans versus the increasing buying power of more Chinese and the manufacturing migration to China. But things aren't looking great for the Chinese Yuan either, and that helped settle the tide between the two currencies. Government Transparency How many people are there that truly understand the dynamics behind the Yuan? Only as many as 35 members of China's state council, so not many. And this lack of transparency is the greatest drawback against the Yuan. Stability in currency is the single biggest factor which makes countries gravitate to the dollar. On the other hand, you've got the Yuan. Even though Western countries, mainly led by the US, call for more liberalization of the Chinese currency, it's still very tightly controlled by China. Last April saw China insisting on market interventions. They hyped up the yuan to avoid disruption as they shift from their dependence on exports to domestic consumption. All of this strongly points to the fact that the yuan is yet to grow. It's vulnerable without its strict government compared to the dollar which has seen the roughest ends of the open markets and still comes out on top. Furthermore, the Chinese government debt markets aren't nearly as liquid or sophisticated as the US. And China doesn't exactly have a nice track record when it comes to not exproprieting foreign capital. And let's not get started about the recent long COVID lockdowns which have crushed confidence in the government. Let's talk about the politics. In 2011, the UN Population Division and Goldman Sachs predicted that the Chinese middle class will be four times larger than the American middle class by the year 2030. What does this mean in terms of wealth and economy for the two countries? This marginal gap in their middle classes doesn't mean that Americans are getting poorer, but rather it means that the Chinese are just getting richer. The silver lining for the United States in the rise of China's middle class is that as they get more powerful, they'll change their main authority in China, the Politburo. This uncertainty is probably going to pressurize many of the richer middle class Chinese people, and they'll be left with no option but to invest in a more transparent environment, the United States. And yet another problem that the Chinese Yuan faces is that most of the richer middle class Chinese reside in the, well, richer cities in China. And these cities can only take so much stress. Remember the severity of Beijing's air pollution? Compare all of that to the middle class in America, which is fairly spread out across the country. And this spells economic fortune for the states. The chance to create pools of economic activities in more areas is definitely something that the United States has in its favor. This means that the rising middle class in China is going to spill over to the US economy. More Chinese will want to spend more in the world's number one economy, and then those US companies will sell more in the world's second biggest economy, China. The United States remains at the top of the food chain, friendly pressure. Did you know that there are already two countries directly trading in Yuan between China and the themselves. We're talking about Australia and Japan, and this means both countries don't need US dollars to trade with China. This is obviously good for the Yuan, right? This probably means that it's gradually taking the dollar's place in the reserves of other countries. Sounds good? Yes and no. First of all, the Yuan taking over the dollar's place as trade between the countries only extends to just those countries. Looking at the bigger picture, in world trade, the United States is going to exert a little bit of friendly pressure to maintain the dollar as the standard exchange currency. 
and no one has anything against that. Except maybe North Korea, Iran, and, well, China. Last February, a Bloomberg report made it rather ominous for the dollar. China's total trade in goods rounded up to about $3.87 trillion, which surpassed the United States' $3.82 trillion trade, though only barely. But account for the service trade, which, when cost in, raises the United States to $4.93 trillion with an added $195.3 billion in that sector alone. The significance of China's little victory is easily lost. China's main strength is manufacturing, but that's not all that world trade is limited to. It involves a huge chunk of financial science, intellectual property, and information technology trade, among many others. So the Yuan doesn't have it easy. For it to take the dollar's place in world trade, China can't just rely on making cheap products. Sure, China is taking part in infrastructure development and it's also exporting its engineering and construction to many developing countries. But it's a long journey to take, and one that will face heavy competition from the US apart from the list of the reasons that we've already talked about. History has it for the dollar. We see a pattern throughout history. The world's reserve currency has always gravitated towards the country or empire that has dominated its neighbors. Take ancient Greece's silver drachma, the Roman-issued coins, the Byzantine's gold solidus, and even the Arabian dinar. These were some of the most dominant means of exchange during their respective reigns in history. And fast forwarding to not too long ago, the Spanish silver coin and the British Empire's pounds had the same influence across the globe. And there's one hidden thread which connects these influences. They are strewn across their empires, an unstable group of colonies and conquered markets. This means that their ability to maintain their status as the world's reserve currency relied heavily on their ability to maintain their empires. But empires fall, and so do their currencies. After the Second World War, when Britain lost most of its colonies, the dollar took over, and the landscape has changed drastically since. The United States dollar is built on the strength of a single strong market of Americans who just buy and sell stuff, and the collective political, cultural, and historical ties of the Western countries to the US only add to that. Maybe it's a historical feat that there exists now a universal currency that is being used by the largest pool of consumers who belong to a country, and they'll go as far as to defend this country from any threats from outside. The bottom line. The United States dollar sits on a throne over a population of 310 million people compared to the Chinese Yuan spread across 1.3 billion people, and these people will demand for more rights from their governments as they get richer. There's no mistake that the Chinese Yuan is destined to be a major world reserve currency. That is, if it isn't already. But the most it can do against the dollar is not much. Sure, it can eat up a chunk of the world's dollar reserves by means of bilateral negotiations, but that's as far as it gets. At best, the Chinese Yuan will bully out the other major currencies as a world reserve currency, but not the dollar. Do you think the Yuan can overtake the dollar in the future, or is it just a pipe dream? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one. Make sure to watch our next video.